434, speak of the rings of the blessed. We speak of the rings of the blessed. We speak of the rings of the blessed. We
to him, sing my wondrous love of Jesus. Then more. Exit 33. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the march of bright and blessed, he prepared for us a place. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of greatness it not be. When we all see Jesus, we sing and shout the victory.
Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your tender care guidance all through the day from morning till now. Thank you, Lord, for enabling us to come here. And thank you for bringing those of us that are already here safely. Some of us are yet on their way. Please bring them safely so that we may all join together in this worship as we listen to you speak to us today. Dear Lord, forgive us for the sins we've committed. We're not even worthy to be in your presence this hour, but it's because of your mercies and grace that we are here. I pray that may you save us and may you give us peace at your feet so that you may listen to that word that you have for us this evening. Lord, I also dedicate the speaker to your able hands. Please use him to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. The church for us to present an item. I'm told it's the youth who are young adults.
is to speak to us. It was a very emotional call. 
because God was aware that he is about to drop a bombshell and he is about to give Abraham a test of his life. Uh, Abraham is responded to the call of God and he told God that God here I am. In verse 2 God dropped the bombshell in which he told Abraham to take his son, his only son, whom you love, Isaac. God was acknowledging the love of Abraham to Isaac he was also appreciating that Isaac was Abraham's only son. But nonetheless, he insisted uh, that Isaac must be offered as a burnt offering on Mount Moria. I told you the other night that offering Isaac as a burnt offering was no big deal to Abraham, except that Isaac was the light of Abraham's home. Isaac was the solace of his old age. The pen of inspiration describes Isaac as the divine inheritor of the covenant and of the blessings within the Abrahamic covenant. So it was not a very simple is issue. It was like Isaac was an embodiment of the destiny of his father Abraham. It is with a lot of pain in his heart that this aging patriarch had to walk back into his tent and wake his son Isaac and break the news to him that Isaac we are going to Moria to worship our God. If you look at the story from the book of Patriarchs and Prophets, the pen of inspiration observes that when Abraham went back to the tent and looked at Isaac and joined the innocent slumber of a youth, his heart melted with pain. But because God had spoken, he woke Isaac up anyway. And he told him, son, go wake up two servants. Tell them to untie two colts. Prepare some wood. We are going to Mount Moria to worship our God. And so Isaac innocently went and gave the two servants information and the two servants prepared two donkeys. Abraham also came bearing a sword and fire within him. But along the way as Abraham was going to join Isaac together with the two servants, a thought quickly crossed his mind. And Abraham questioned himself, should I involve Sarah, my wife, in this, or should I ignore her? Should I tell Sarah this business, or should I not? But Abraham, in his own wisdom, chose to ignore Sarah. Why? Number one, Abraham understood the emotional attachment between Sarah and Isaac, the son of her old age. But even more importantly, Abraham remembered the day of his calling when he was resting alone under the shade of Mamre tree. And there, alone by himself, God approached him and told him, Abraham, I want to enter into a covenant with you. And this is going to be a covenant between me, God, and you, Abraham. It is a relationship between two people. God was aware that Abraham is married, but God did not 
call Abraham during their family meeting. God was aware that Abraham had relatives around. He was aware that Abraham was living with the Lord, his brother's son. But God did not go to Abraham during a clan meeting. God went personal with Abraham. And so Abraham appreciated that the relationship he is enjoying with God is a personal relationship. Although Sarah was the wife, was the love of his life, Abraham, when it got to the question of worship, he dared not seek the permission of Sarah. And church, let me submit to you tonight. The beauty of worship, the beauty of prayer, the beauty of serving God sometimes demands that we relate with God at a personal level. God takes no pleasure in corporate worship. Sometimes it is important to go personal with God because we serve a personal God. It is a big gamble to display your conviction about your God on the altar of the crowd so that you seek to worship your God based on the norms of the majority. If majority in your company is not keeping the Sabbath, you begin thinking if Sabbath is necessary anyway. I submit to all of us that God is such a person of God and when it comes to the question of worship, Worship God as a person before you do it by the psychology of a crowd. In any case, a crowd has hardly done the will of God. I once read when Pilate, in, in Pilate's judgment hall, when Christ was paraded side by side with Barabbas, Pilate was convinced that Christ is no ordinary prisoner. In fact, the pen of inspiration says that when Pilate looked at the face of Jesus, he saw a nobility of demeanor that he had never witnessed anywhere, although he was a long-time Roman judge. And even his wife sent him a letter and told him, Pilate, have nothing to do with that man. But Pilate made a blunder of involving the multitude with his conviction. And that is why Christ was crucified shortly after that the Roman judge Pilate had a very tragic end. Go look for the book, The Sire of Ages, in the chapter called In Pilate's Judgment Hall, and you will see why majority, given a chance, will choose one of their very own. Even now, if you present Jesus and Barabbas to the world, I am sure the world will opt for Barabbas because he is their very own. So back to our story in Genesis chapter 22. My Bible says that side by side, the father and the son journeyed in silence. The two servants were on one colt. Abraham and Isaac were also on another donkey. It was a three-day journey. 
And on the third day, it is written that Abraham beheld a cloud of a, a smoke of cloud gathered on the top of Mount Moriah. And Abraham quickly realized that that must be the appointed place for the offering. It is written in the pen of inspiration that those three days journey were like three years to Abraham. That was the most painful journey Abraham had ever taken in his lifetime. Now when they got at the foot of Mount Moriah, Abraham spoke these words in Genesis chapter 22 verse 5. My Bible says, And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey, and I and the lad will go yonder, and we will worship and return to you. Church, there are two interesting insights that I want us not to miss in verse 5. Number one, Abraham is looking at his servants straight in their eyes. He is telling them to stay here with the donkey. He father tells them that I, Abraham, and the Lord Isaac, we will go yonder and worship. What does Abraham call worship in this context? It is the giving of Isaac as a burnt offering. In the understanding of Abraham, the act of presenting his son to the Lord as an offering is worship. So Abraham has journeyed with God to an extent that Abraham understands the act of offering as worship. He's not telling them I am going to offer Isaac to God. He's not telling them I am taking God an offering. In the mind of Abraham, any action done in the name of God is worship. I wish that would sink in. Any activity done in the name of God, as long as the subject and object of that activity is God, that is worship. When you stand here to sing, that is an act of worship, nothing less. Anything done in the name of God, is an act of worship and God must be at the center of that activity. God alone must be honored and exalted in anything in his name. It is not fair to use the name of God in vain. Now that I am taking Isaac to God, it is worship. I am going to worship. That must be the understanding that I submit to all of us. Anything you do in the name of God must be an act of worship. And God must take the center stage of that activity. Whether it's giving your tithes and offering, that is an act of worship. Whether it is singing in a choir, it's an actual act of worship. Whether it is um, any activity in the name of God. But insight number two, Abraham is telling his servants that after worshiping God, wait for us here. I am coming back to you with my son Isaac. That is faith. Because the Lord was very clear. And Abraham was aware that he is going to offer Isaac as a burnt offering. There were almost seven types of offerings in the Jewish economy. But this God was specific 
he wanted Isaac as a burnt offering. In other words, Isaac was to be consumed by fire on the altar of sacrifice. But Abraham is telling his servants that after taking my son and consuming him with fire as a burnt offering, wait for us here because I am coming back to you with Isaac. That is faith, church. If someone asked Abraham, that old man, how, tell us how, where will you get Isaac? After offering him as a burnt offering, I am sure this old patriarch would have said, I don't know how. All I know is that I am not coming out of Moria alone. I will offer him as a burnt offering, yes, but I will come back with him. That is fair. Someone once told me that pastor, faith simply believes and leaves the how in the hands of God. Faith just believes. And the how part of it, faith leaves to the hands of God. There are things that science cannot explain. There are things, church, that does not need a litmus test. How the prayer offered in your humble bedroom will release that sick patient suffering of cancer and set him free. The science behind that cannot be explained by human philosophy. Prayer alone can fix some of these challenges we are going through. So faith simply believes and leaves the how in the hands of God. Faith demands that you kneel down and you pray for your son or husband who is in the slavery of addiction. How that humble prayer is going to release your addicted son to the extent that he drops the wine bottle and picks the Bible and begins testifying about the redemptive power of Christ. That human language cannot explain. Faith simply believes and leaves the how to God. I encourage someone tonight, just believe. You may not explain how, you may not know when, but you can be sure that God will never run out of options. He can do it to you. Abraham is persuaded. And you know, at this point in history, the doctrine of resurrection had not matured. No one, as a matter of fact, had ever resurrected. Abraham could not explain how, but he is giving his servants an assurance in the first person that we will worship and we will return to you. God alone was to witness the parting scene between the Father and the Son. No one else was allowed to witness the blood of Isaac rolling on the altar on the mountain, killed by the hand of his very Father. The pen of inspiration says that angels watched with pleasure as Isaac picked the wood and began climbing Mount Moria, heaven watched with pleasure as the old patriarch picked his sword and fire and followed his son side by side 
The father and son climbed Mount Moria in silence. But when they got to the top of mountain, my Bible says that Isaac paused and turned and looked at his father straight in his eyes. And Isaac dropped a question, which was the last thing Abraham had wanted to hear. Isaac asked his father Abraham, he called him my father. And the pen of inspiration says that as the words my father dropped from the lips of the young lad, they pierced the heart of Abraham. Seeing that Isaac is acknowledging him as his father, yet moments away Isaac is to be laid on the altar and butchered alive. Abraham prayed again to God if he could give a new command. If God could, could, could by chance change his mind. But no new command was given. Heaven had spoken and he was not going to take back his word. So Abraham asked Isaac, what, it is, what is it my son? And Isaac told him, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the offering? That was a question of fear. Though it was a very honest question, church. Isaac is calling the attention of his father to a missing link in their journey. He's telling Abraham that that we are going to worship God. And this was not the first time Abraham and Isaac were, go were going to Mount Moria. Except that every other time they went to Moria, there was some lamb for the offering. But today, they are on top of the mountain already. But there is no lamb. Isaac is concerned that, Dad, we are not complete. Something is missing in our journey. You are carrying the sword, I am carrying the wood. But where is the lamb? I love the answer that Abraham gave. He accepted the reality that something is still missing. He did not rebuke Isaac for saying the truth. He did not assume Isaac for speaking the reality. Abraham did not deny that they don't have a lamb, except he told Isaac that it is okay, the lamb is not there, but that which is missing, God will provide. You know, church, sometimes we live in denial a lot. Faith demands that you accept reality as bleak as it may appear. Don't live in denial. Accept. Did you know that you can never change a situation that you are still denying? You can't. You can never change a story that you are in denial of. The first step towards overcoming that which you are going through is acceptance. Stop living in denial, church. If something is missing in your life, accept. Abraham is not denying. They are going to worship God, yes. They have responded to the invitation by God, yes, but something, there is a vacuum in their journey. The lamb for the offering is not there. I submit to all of us that you accept your story as dirty as it may be. It may be stinking, 
Your life story may not be the best of stories, but it is your story anyway. If you lost your parents and you have to live that as an orphan, please accept. If you are a single parent and you have to raise your family as a single parent, accept. If you have an health issue, it is important to accept. It may be sad if you have lost a loved one, please accept. It starts by accepting. You are not going to change that situation when you are living in denial. And why do I insist in accepting? I told you yesterday that 92% of our stressors today are all in the past. It had happened. Some of us have refused to come out of their past. Denial, 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 and denial. You must learn to let go. So Abraham is telling Isaac that my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. Listen, the pen of inspiration records that as soon as they got to the mountain top, Abraham built for himself an altar. And when the young boy saw his father build an old, building an altar, he joined him. And together the aging patriarch with the son erected an altar. Isaac then reached for the wood and arranged neatly on the altar. And after arranging the wood, Isaac retreated a little. He took some steps away from the altar, leaving his father standing beside the altar. And it is recorded that Isaac looked at the altar with a great sense of excitement and anxiety. An anxiety that no human language can describe. The anxiety that was in the heart of Isaac when he was looking at the altar. What was Isaac expecting? He had asked about the lamb and he was told that God will provide. <coughs> so Isaac is waiting to see the providence of God. He wants to see how God is going to, 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 to provide that lamb. Abraham is also in a dilemma. He is wondering within himself. in history that Abraham went to Isaac. He looked at his son straight in his eyes and the church for the first time Abraham told Isaac the story of his birth. Abraham talked to Isaac like a father would speak to a son. With fear and trembling, Abraham unfolded to Isaac the mystery of his birth. He told Isaac the promises of God. He told Isaac the mockery and insults they had to endure during the many years of childlessness. Abraham told Isaac about the visit by the angel. And how they mocked angel and laughed at heaven 
When the angel said that he will be born, so passionate was Abraham in telling Isaac his story that the pen of inspiration says that even before Abraham finished, he saw the young boy Isaac leave and climb the altar on his own. And Isaac knelt on the altar and lifted his hands up. And he called his father and told him, Father, if that is my story, Dad, if that is my story, if that is how far heaven has journeyed with us, Father, come with your sword and fire and offer me to the Lord as a burnt offering because now I know that I am a product of God's grace. With pain in his heart, Abraham went beside the altar and tied Isaac on the altar. Not because Isaac was intending to run, but so that Isaac does not fall out of the altar because of pain. And Isaac reached, Abraham reached to his sword and lifted it up. Sister White says that all heaven watched with pleasure. And for the first time, the unfallen angels understood the cost of salvation. Yeah. That man took the sword and lifted it up. But because of the pain of the father, his, his hand trembled. And the sword fell and he picked it. His hand trembled again and he picked it a third time. And this time round he kissed Isaac goodbye. And he held the sword firmly in his hand. And he closed his eyes not to see the blood of his son. And he was about to pierce the throat of Isaac when an angel was sent to hold his hands and the heaven spoke. Amen. Let me tell you, church, heaven applauds fidelity. Amen. God speaks when there is an act of faithfulness. Heaven applauds fidelity. When you stand your ground, and say like Justice Maraga said, over my dead body will I sit on the judgment seat on a Sabbath. Heaven will speak to confirm your stand. Heaven applauds fidelity. And faithfulness is the only thing that God is looking for from every believer who subscribes to him. Do you know what heaven said? Heaven told Abraham that do not stretch out your hand against the land and do nothing to him for now I know that you fear God. I pray for a day that God will make this statement on me. I pray for a day when God will make a confession from his throne that Churchill, now I know, sasa ni mejua that you are truly my servant. I long for such a compliment by God. When heaven will look at you at your office and smile, and say, now I know that you are my child. When God will look at how you live faithfully with your wife, and say, now I know we must serve God until God acknowledges our service. And Abraham was told to look behind him 
Upon looking, he saw a ram held by the horns in a thicket of the forest. And he was told to go and pick that ram. It is recorded interestingly in history that a, a sap ram was going to pick the lamb. Isaac was still tied on the altar. So this innocent boy Isaac looked at the direction his father was headed and somehow his eyes passed over his father and Isaac saw the ram in a thicket. The ram also looked at the altar and saw Isaac. The eye of the ram met with the eye of Isaac on the altar. At that very moment, church, Isaac became the prototype of Jesus himself. Amen. Isaac became a replica of Jesus. And if I had time, I would have demonstrated to you how Isaac became a shadow of Jesus. What is my message tonight? I am saying that we serve a God who speaks when there is a demonstration of faithfulness. And you see, when God speaks, circumstances change, even death is reversed, or the agenda of the devil in your life is destroyed and overthrown. When God speaks, Please take God personally. Take God personally. Do not live in denial. Be faithful to God and He will make a statement in your favor. Tonight, my prayer is that God will increase our faith. A faith that will be able to withstand the influences of the environment. A faith that will overcome the pressures of the society. A faith that will make you stand for the truth even when heaven and earth falls. A faith that will enable you to stand even on the side of the minority if it is the right thing. Maybe you have some faith in God, that's why you are here. But it is not enough. It is a faith that when exposed to certain circumstances, it fails. It is a faith that can be compromised. A faith that in some environment you would not wish to be identified as married. It is a faith that when subjected to some, some, some test of principle, it cannot withstand. But tonight you are asking God, God increase my faith. Father, I believe in you, but my faith is not sufficient. Sometimes my faith fails me. Sometimes my faith is so weak. I can hardly attend a Bible study when my football team is having a final match. Lord, increase my faith. Father, sometimes I am, I am tempted to sneak into my shop on a Sabbath when a customer knocks, Lord, increase my faith. Lord, sometimes I am tempted to attend burials and funerals of the dead when my village have set a date on a Sabbath. Father, increase my faith. Sometimes I entertain infidelity, yet I made a vow to my partner, Father, increase my faith. Give me a faith that can withstand the test of time. Faith like the faith of Abraham. And let me tell you, church, nowhere in history has genuine faith ever been defeated. Faith can never 
never be defeated. Remember when I was in high school, and I'm glad some of my schoolmates are here, almost throughout my Form 4 class, other than KCSC, I don't remember a single exam that I did the entire papers. Because you would do exam and at least one paper would fall on a Sabbath. So when the exam happened, when the results come, you go to the notice board. Every other person is graded, then Churchill's name is down there, and the grade is Y. Meaning you did not complete the exam. I plead with us to ask God for an increased faith. May God bless us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Eternal Father in heaven, Lord, increase our faith. We have some faith in you, and that is why we are all here present. We have faith in you, that is why we are baptized. We have faith in you, but Lord, our request tonight, increase it. It is so shallow, so weak, a faith that is so easy to compromise, a faith that only serves you based on the conveniences of the day. Will you give us a faith like the faith of Abraham, a faith that took risk, even when it meant sacrificing his very destiny, but in the end, we are delighted, Heavenly Father, that you spoke. And by that single statement, you acknowledged the faith of Abraham. I pray that you give us the faith that will make you acknowledge our service. If there be anyone in this audience, who is struggling to accept an event, a past event in their lives, I plead with you to give them the courage to accept and commit it to you. Heavenly Father, revive us by this message. That is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.